Sorry I'm a little bit late. This guy ate some cat grass and promptly threw up. Um, so I had to clean up that little vomit puddle first. But we're here, and we're gonna see if he wants food. It's dinner time for Fred. Um, do you want to eat right after you threw up? Is that what you would like? Yeah. All right. You want food, Fred? Of course you do. Yes? Yes? What would you like to say? Use your words. Can I put all the food down first, please? Oh my god, rude. Hashtag look. 
Wow, somebody had a little too much drugs in their system today. To go with our Turkish snacks tonight, I will be brewing some of this Turkish tea that Aaron got for me on a previous trip to Turkey. Um, I figured, apt. What do I think about romance? I don't know, that's a very broad, non-specific question. What about romance? Romance as an idea? Romance in practice? Romance in my own life? Romance for others? What are we talking about here? Because he only has three teeth, he's not really able to cut through them. So what he does is he just chews on them, and they all wilt, and they all die on the same day, no matter how many pots I plant. Um, so I just tried to chop some off for him on a plate in case he actually wanted to ingest it, but he had no interest whatsoever in the cut bits. I think he just really likes to chew on them. Do I think romance is real? Um, is money real? It's as real as everything else in life. It just depends on how much you believe in it. Romance can be real for me. It's not always real. Turkish tea usually brewed with sugar. I don't know. Does it taste sweet? Uh, I don't usually make it myself. I, just, I, don't, I, don't. I know, but does it taste sweet? No, it doesn't taste sweet. Okay. Are you going to eat your greens, Freddie? Are you going to eat your veggies? Hello, Linda. You're out of data. Uh-oh. People missed your voice, Aaron. How's the grass, Fred? Artisanally grown. It's organic. Hand cut. You have like a three more licks in here, dude. You sure? Mm. There you 
you go. Good boy. You did it. You ate your veggies. Yay. Okay, now it's our turn to eat. And eat we shall. Okay, so here's our tea brewing in my IKEA pot. It's, um, the leaves haven't sunk yet because the water is not up to a boil. And this here is the entire stash that Aaron brought back from his recent, oops, sorry, from his recent travels. We got some pistachios. We got some Turkish dried persimmons. They look a little bit different than the Korean ones that we just had, eh? Eh? Um, we have some dried mulberries. We have Turkish raisins. Um, we have other pistachios that are not quite red. We have uh, these. I, I don't know what they are, but they look pistachio based. Um, we have candy chestnuts. These look not rancid like the ones we just made yesterday. Very fun. We probably won't open these tonight. We have some pistachio halva, very heavy, 500 grams, so that's about a pound, a little more than a pound. Um, I'm not cooking anything probably tonight. And then Erin got me four boxes of cookies from this bake shop. We already ate one. If you go to my Instagram stories, you'll see the one that we ate. That one is sitting in the freezer. I will be not eating that one again tonight because I have too much things to eat. But it was basically like an emeretti cookie, like a very soft emeretti cookie, almond flour based. Very delicious, very moist. So that's three of those. And then finally we have a more generic looking box of butter cookies type things. Um, not sure why Aaron got this one after he got all the fancy ones. But the ingredients are hilarious on this one. It says wheat flour, gluten, sugar, drinking water, vegetable oil, Sunflower oil, hydrogenated vegetable oil, uh oh, olive oil, egg so by. Like yes. Egg by type, India, walnut, pistachio, peanut, sesame, vanilla, baking powder, drop drop. <laughs> drop drop, y'all. Drop drop, dark chocolate, raisin, apple or apricot marmalade, cocoa, dried fruit, cinnamon, orange lemon particles, orange lemon particles, and salt. Made in Turkey. And we're up to a boil now. Um, bad news. I don't know what drop drop is either. Bad news, I do feel like my root canal tooth is about to fall out any day now. It's starting to get that feeling of, you know when you're losing teeth as a kid, that kind of like almost twangy, loose feeling. It doesn't feel loose, but I'm afraid to touch it. But I'm pretty sure I probably ate one too many crunchy things and something's wrong because it's been, what, five or six months since I've had the root canal? Um, yeah, not... It could be a new look, a missing tooth, um, but I don't know if you're supposed to boil the tea leaves, but we are. I don't make tea properly, and I don't care to. I once went into a Greenpoint tea, sh tea shop in Brooklyn, and I asked them what the most bitter tea they had there was, because I like it bitter, and the lady told me that if you brew tea properly, it shouldn't be bitter, and I was like, cool, I will show myself out. Um,
Yeah, I tried to ask my doctor for a crown, but he said that because this tooth is already so small, we would have to basically grind and file it down in order to get a crown on. He didn't think it was worth it. Um, little did he know I eat for a living, so... That was a root canal tooth. And this is a root canal tooth. <laughs> so I will have matching missing teeth. Or rather, mismatched missing teeth. Um, so root canal means you take out the nerve. It doesn't really hurt in the traditional way anymore. It doesn't have sensation anymore without the nerve, but it does feel not good. Um, yeah, why do dentists have the highest suicide rate? I don't understand. Yo, I would love to have a gold implant. That's what I'm going to spend mom's hard-earned savings on. One single solid gold tooth. Oh, man. The tea smells like black tea. A little bit medicinal. What shall we eat first? Do you guys have preferences on what we start with? You know, gold is an investment. And when I die, they can probably take it out and melt it down. That could be part of my estate, you know? Um, wow, gold. Should I get rose gold? This? Is this what you mean? Is this what you mean by mystery bag? So, um, I don't read Turkish. Uh, I, I don't know how to read this. Um, so if anybody is from Turkey and you know what this is, tell me what this is. Um, It has dates, hazelnuts, pistachios, chicory root fiber, chickpea flour, cocoa mass, and a sea salt. So I think this is like a date-based truffle. Kind of like what we had when Aaron went to Doha and brought me back that entire case. Um, so it's basically like a date-based truffle, I think. It looks like a little turd. It truly looks like a little turd. It looks like a Fred turd. Um, here we are starting off with literal shit. It smells like cocoa, a little bit like a Tootsie Roll, but a little more natural than a Tootsie Roll. It kind of smells like an RX bar. Have you ever had an RX bar? The ones that are like date based. RX bars, um, or like a Luna bar. Sometimes a Luna bar smells like this. Mm, mm -hmm. And it's coated in pistachio dust that has gotten wet and damp and embedded into the surface of the turd, so it looks like moldy turd now. There's something in the middle. I'm not sure exactly what, but there's a slightly lighter mass in the middle. Oh, that's a nut butter. So, outside, this is like, um, this is like a Luna bar turned into a Ferrero Rocher. The outside, instead of chopped hazelnuts, is wet, damp, minuscule dots of pistachio. Instead of chocolate, you have like a date cocoa mixture. And then in the middle, you have some sort of nut butter. And it could be hazelnuts, it could be pistachio. It's probably hazelnuts in the middle, so. I like the nut butter bit the most. Google Turkish 
Lacoma. Okay. thing came up first Lokma it is bite-sized fluffy sweet honey balls the Greek version of donuts but I'm pretty sure this isn't it I already told you what you, you I already told you what we ate it's a date tur like it's a it's a it's a date turd a date turd it tastes okay not my favorite for sure moving on what do we want to eat next I'm gonna give this a 5.8 out of 10. Wait, vitamin check. Did we have vitamins? Oh, so you guys have to come to a consensus. You can't just, everybody's voting differently. Persimmon break because I saw two of the persimmons. Very frosty. This is not mold, this is just surface sugar. Don't worry. I'm gonna do a tiny baby one. This one right here. It's a tiny baby. The sugar comes off on your fingers. Do you see how fuzzy my finger just got? You can just lick the sugar off. So did you know that Americans have different earwax than Asians? Or like white people? <laughs> European people have different earwax than Asian people? Problematic. Apparently, Europeans earwax look more like this color and they're gunkier and Asians have like a slightly more white waxiness to it Very strange fact Sounds racist, but it's true Sometimes racism is true But also I think we need to define what racism is, you know, I think racism is an abuse of power it Doesn't really count if you're just spilling facts supported by science but science also takes a turn for the weird and the discriminatory sometimes, but you really, so it's just, humans complicate everything. Never mind. let's go back to persimmons. This is very nice, syrupy. Very, very sweet, much drier than the Korean variety we just had. This is slightly more in line with the Chinese version that I've had growing up, and this is the absolute first time I've ever gotten a seed, a pit, inside a dried persimmon. 
There's two. Two seeds. Wait, there's three. Wow. So many seeds. I don't not like it, but I like my Asian ones more. I like the Chinese ones the best. The first time I tried to clean out Aaron's ear, I was like, holy shit, do you have an infection? Because his ear wax is a completely different consistency and color than mine. And I freaked out because I was like, this looks wrong. But that's just the way his ear wax is. Bodies are weird. All right, what's next? I'm ready for food. You have your choice. You have this cookie, you have this cookie, you have this cookie, you have two pistachios. You have this cookie that I'm kind of just tempted to give away. Aaron, would you feel bad if I just gave away these cookies? No, go for it. I might just put this in a... Yeah, those weren't the... I, those weren't supposed to be the good cookies. I might just put these in a, a community fridge or something. Because I have way too much cookies and I have no space anymore and I'm about to start developing recipes for work and it's just going to be a shit show. I saw a lot of votes for halva. We're going to go for the halva. Bye Sandra. I'm going to mostly work from home. I can't keep all the cookies and Aaron already gave me permission to give away one, so. No, Wikipedia says that white people and Asian people have different ear waxes. Look it up. I'm not basing it on the number of one. Listen, I am racist from time to time, but like, I think this is scientific. Hova. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Let me see if I have a container to store this in. My favorite one. Mmm. Ooh. Mmm. It's not impossible to do budget eats in Manhattan. If anybody who lives in Manhattan want me to go to Manhattan and do budget eats, I, I certainly can. You just have to know the neighborhoods. The sesame smell is so strong. Let's see what the ingredients are. I think this might all be not in English, but all in Turkish. But I think I can guess. Well, 50%, 54% tahin. And then I think sugar, maltose. I don't know what entep festigi is, but I'm guessing that's pistachio. And then it looks like a lot of oils and vanilla aroma. Just guessing. Pistachio right there. Oh, it smells so good. Oh. 
halva is ground up sesame paste beaten together with boiling sugar caramel. That's it. It's literally straight fat and sugar. Wow. Oh my god. So good. And it kind of crumbles in your mouth and melts. It kind of gets stuck to your teeth like taffy. Just a little bit. It gets like compacted into the nooks of your teeth. The rest of it kind of flakes away a little bit like dehydrated peanut butter. It has a strong sense of sesame taste because that is most of what halva is. It's sesame paste. It's very sweet. Tastes like a sesame candy brittle powdered into a dust and compressed together with sugar syrup. So this is so fucking good. Um, halva is very bad for me to have on hand. I once bought a pound like this of halva and I pretty much ate the whole thing in three days. Um, as I've said, I have no self-control sometimes. Most times. Ugh. That was a roach. Did you see it? Tiny baby roach. Aaron, the roach is encroaching on my Tupperware. It's not alliteration. That's not alliteration. Alliteration is. That's not. That's also not alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of beginning consonants. Uh, what is it if it's not alliteration? I don't fucking know, guys. It's been a while. What a perfect fit. I might have a baby roach infestation. I'm not sure what's going on. All right, what's next? So I don't think I'm gonna eat the chestnuts and I don't think I'm gonna eat the raisins because uh, we just ate chestnuts yesterday and raisins are raisins. Um, do, you, we, do we wanna see the mulberries? Do we wanna try the mulberries? Or you wanna go for the boxes? Okay. We think this is gonna fit. Middle box. 
Halwa, Halwa, Halwa. I think it's kind of because the way we transliterate words into English. I mean, halva, as spelled H-A-L-V-A-H, only has two vowels. And usually the rule of thumb in English is that if you have a vowel, you have a syllable. So if you only have two vowels, you only have two syllables. So in order for us to say halva, we would have to have a third vowel in there. Um, so we just got to change the spelling. I don't know if you follow Sang. He contributes to Delish, and he also has his own YouTube channel. But Sang has been saying on his Instagram how we all pronounce larb wrong. You know, like, uh, larb, the Thai salad. And it's he's also from Laos, and so I think Laotian food has, uh, a larb too, but apparently it's pronounced more like lab, but we spell it L-A-R-B, so of course we're going to pronounce the R. Um, mystery box number two. Knefe. How do you, how do you say knefe? Aaron, do you want to try the cookies? Uh, nope. Are you trying a different one? Yeah, I'm trying all of them. Different ones. Okay. Uh, no. These smell like, uh, butter cookies. They smell like those Danish butter cookies. They look like a dry puck of a peanut butter what do you call those? Sandies. They look like a peanut butter Sandies. Mmm. Wow. At first, really dry. Definitely very crumbly. The first taste I get is flour like wheat flour and oil. The sugar is so minimal here. It tastes like how yo tiao tastes, which is a Chinese donut, barely sweet. To Americans, this would not even read as dessert, I don't think. That's how not sweet it is. So this is like less sweet than Irish soda bread. Do you want me to take a cookie out and put it in a container so that tomorrow you don't have to defrost all of them? Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take one cookie of each and put it in a Talenti container so that tomorrow, Aaron can have some. I'm also gonna start on my tea. Um, I don't have trouble sleeping if I just smoke weed. <laughs> then I fall asleep within 10 minutes. <clears throat> I 
It tastes a lot more floral and feminine. Before it tasted like um, a 60 year old uncle grandma hybrid, but now it tastes like the recently divorced 50 year old aunt, if that makes sense. Feminine to me means a little bit softer around the edges in terms of flavor. It's more well-rounded. It's not as gruff. It's not as dry. The tea is very mild. Very, very mild. I brewed the shit out of it and it's not even that bitter. repack this and then we can keep going yeah I can see why you boil the tea for 15 minutes in Turkey because that's the only time that it actually tastes strong enough for me, to be honest. Yeah, the tea there tastes amazing. I just don't know how to do it. Turkish tea is amazingly weak, um, and that's why I boiled it straight. People are like, you don't boil, why are you boiling? It's because the, weak, the tea is weak, okay? It's not meant to be a criticism, it's just how the tea is. So in order to extract the flavor, I gotta boil it straight. Apparently I didn't even boil it enough. Yeah, I don't have a double boiler system going. Is it like those um, Italian coffee makers? I don't remember what they're called, but they look really nifty and they're usually like made of really heavy aluminum and they look kind of geometric with a black handle and then the top portion is basically where you put the coffee and then the water kind of boils upwards and it's basically like steam condensation brewing. Bialetti, Bialetti, that's mocha pot, whatever. One of those. Okay, what's next? My children, feed me. We got pistachios, we got mulberries. Um, we got, we got some crystallized ginger that is apparently expiring this month. Um, and we have the two cookies left. What do you want to see? mulberries. Let's do mulberries. So this is organic dried mulberries. It smells like Chinese green raisins. There's a very like tart edge to it. It almost smells like if you took a slice of dried Granny Smith apples. Mmm! Wow! Wow! Okay, so when Aaron first gave me this, and he was like, I got you these, 
because Efson, his friend in Turkey, was like, these are so good. And I was like, oh, I don't really like mulberries that much. These are so fucking sweet. And yes, Hazal, they're, they're so fucking chewy. They're so gummy-like. The flavor is like... A raisin, but texture. The outside is kind of fluffy because of the little kind of pockets that mulberries have. But the inside is just as chewy as the most syrupy, syrupy, well dried raisin. It has a very soft teeth sink quality to it. Um, and it is sweet. It tastes like honey. Like it tastes like you're drinking honey and the honey is kind of like getting stuck in your throat and your tongue is kind of starting to taste almost dankly bitter because of how sweet it is. You know, when sugar just kind of like coats your mouth and you're like, I need water. I feel like I'm suffocating. This is kind of how they taste. Um, amazing texture. Absolutely delicious. So good. I bet these would be so good on top of oatmeal, Bailey's oatmeal. Grandma randomly said she wanted watermelon, and I was like, Grandma, it's fucking winter. Are you sure you want watermelon? She was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You, what, you eat watermelon in the summer. But I went and got her a baby watermelon, so one of these days, in the middle of fucking 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to take her uh, some sliced watermelon pieces, I guess. One of these days, I'm pretty sure Aaron is just going to move to Turkey. Um, so Aaron can't fix the fridge unless we get a new part. Why would I fix the fridge? Because you're being sexist and you believe Aaron is a man who can fix things. Yeah. This thing broke. This thing, this thing broke. Um, I believe. I believe this piece is connected to this piece, and it just snapped. So now there's nothing holding it. Um, there's nothing like springing the door flap, so now I have to tuck the door flap in. Um, oh, so there's cats everywhere in Turkey. All right, it's time to vote. You got cookie one, cookie two, pistachio one, pistachio two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Choose... Dun 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 Oh, very split. You're so split. Twelve. Cookie two, cookie two it is, cookie two, yes, okay.
the brand of cookies, I, one, once I peel this cover off, you can have our uh, resident Turkish friend decipher and read. Or wait, you are the Turkish friend. Okay, well, you're gonna have to decipher and read for us. I mean, it's probably affordable as an American who has either savings or income to live in Turkey, but it's a whole different story for people who are actually in Turkey, right? Because I feel like Turkey isn't um, doing great financially right now as a country. So it all depends on where on the ec economic spectrum you fall. Affordability is all relative. Tarihi? Tarihi? It looks exactly <laughs> like the last one, lol. Um, yeah, Aaron is very jet lagged, which is why he's not here right now. Honestly, I think the best cookie that Aaron got is the one that he didn't plan on getting. Uh, he got three of these cookies that you see here that we're tasting, and then they gave him a sample of the one that he ended up buying last, and that's the one that is up on my Instagram stories, and that one was perfection soft pillowy sweet almondy fragrant just like a pillow that you could fall and rest your soul on but anyway here we go the inferior cookies <laughs> okay this smells less buttery and a little more Almondy. It smells like there's almond extract. Mmm. Very hard. Not very hard. It's still very soft, but it's very. Mmm. 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 Okay. The crumb structure on this is a lot finer and a lot denser than the last one. Neither of, neither one of them hurt your mouth when you chew, but they're definitely not soft. They're like drier shortbreads. They're not as buttery. This one is even less buttery than the last one. American woman, I'm sorry for calling you a sexist. I just guessed that it was a sexist comment because you asked if the man can fix the fridge. But that was probably just a projection. I really like this cookie because I like really dry crumbly things that kind of choke me. Like peanut butter and roasted chickpeas. The tea is not even soaking into this one. The tea doesn't even go into this one. Ooh, bitter almond, okay. So my my nose is really not that bad. It's I got the almond part, I didn't get the bitter almond part. Mm-hmm. I like Again, this is very not sweet. It feels like somebody left out 85% of the sugar in an American recipe. That's what it tastes like. Um, it literally tastes like a tenth of the sugar content you would find in a cinnamon bun. My mom would have loved these, I think. No, that's not true. They're not buttery enough for her, but she would have been like, at least it's not too sweet. <laughs> it, 
Does it taste like biscotti? I feel like biscotti has more of a fragrance to them because they are twice baked. So they're a little bit more caramelized in the oven. They have a little more crunch and toastiness to them. These don't quite have that edge to them. They're just very soft, mild, little things to fill up your stomach with while you're drinking tea. I think Ladu is like milk based and they're more fudgy. These are very dry. This would taste really good um, dipped in like a sugar syrup, I think. Pretty sure Aaron's gonna hate this one. <laughs> Because anything that I like, it's almost guaranteed that Aaron doesn't like it. Almost. Sometimes we coincide. Wrapping this back. It's gonna be impossible. Yo, can I just say, I cannot, I don't understand the hype be behind Levan cookies, but maybe that's because I traumatized myself by trying to make a copycat recipe with Mackenzie. That was a horrible, horrible time in our lives. Just two weeks of developing that one cookie recipe drove me crazy. Yeah, Linda, are we going to your house for the next Budget Eats? Budget Eats on the go? Way. Um, keep an eye on the Delish YouTube channel. Pretty soon, we're going to put out a community post asking everyone to send in their uh, burning questions about Budget Eats. So if you have questions for Budget Eats, be sure to leave a comment once we put out that community post so that I can make a video addressing all of those while eating a shit ton of peanut butter. Or cookies, now that I have cookies. Um, that way, once we make that video, I fucking hope to God that nobody asks me another Budget Eats question ever again. I'm sure we're going to have to answer, where do you go shopping, blah, 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 blah. participate. Of course I would love to answer questions while playing with Fred, but I don't know if he wants to participate. Linda, will it make you feel better if I say I don't love these cookies? Like they're nice? Godzilla pie. <laughs> you devil. Unfortunately, the big wigs at uh, Hearst won't be paying attention to our YouTube channel. So even if you ask about unionizing, <laughs> sorry, even if you ask about unionizing, it'll just be like me and Julia looking at the questions. Um, wow. Okay. My tripod is just like not having it today. That's cool.
I almost got hit by a car again today, guys. Do you remember when I said after the second time, um, the first time I got hit by a car in LA, really bizarre, the second time I came back to New York was on my way to meet mom and I almost got hit by a car like at a really fast speed. And tonight, I, it wasn't that close to death, but I almost got hit by a car because I was walking in the dark on my way to go see grandma and this car started turning coming towards me taking a right and I was crossing and he started turning and then he stopped halfway through the crosswalk and I was halfway through the crosswalk and then he somehow just like changed his mind and started doing a u-turn to go straight and like was within probably four feet of me making that turn obviously really low speed turn and I was just like what the fuck dude um and another car honked at him too um, but really bizarre. Me and cars. Let's see if I survive this year. Maybe not. All right, we might as well go for the last cookie now because we're obviously on a cookie, cookie crunch. How sad would it be if I died within a year of mom. Then I would really probably meet mom somewhere and mom would be like, yo, cannot believe you died. All those times I spent in my life trying to tell you how not to die and you had to go and die so close to me. Mom would be very fucking disappointed in me. Listen, whether or not we manifest it, we don't matter. We don't matter. Last cookie. Yes, that's true. Grandma would be devastated. excitement holler oh my god you guys keep falling were you falling because the cookies look so good wows 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 okay yes These smell like peanuts. They are covered in peanuts. They are a chocolate peanut cookie. Chocolate peanut cookie, chocolate peanut cookie. Okay. Sorry, I just got way too excited about this cookie. Um, let me tell you something that's happened since mom died. Yet another thing, for those of you who are tired of hearing me talk about my dead mom, you can tune away. Um, I was looking at this box of cookie just now, and it's always these little moments when I think of mom. And I was like, which cookie should I eat first, right? Nice box of cookies. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some are more covered in peanuts, and some are more crinkly chocolate explo blo explosions. And I was like, wow, that one looks pretty. I'm going to save it for later. And then another part of me kicked in and is like, you dumb fuck. Don't save anything for later. You see a pretty one, grab the fucking prettiest one and eat it now. Eat it now. So, I chose this one. This is the one that I chose. Nice little crinkly eruptions. Um, covered in peanuts. Um, very toasty peanut smell. Mmm. I can't even smell the chocolate, it's just the peanuts. Mm-hmm. 
This is really fucking not sweet. It is not dessert. I can taste the cocoa powder and the baking soda more than I can taste the sugar, more than I can taste the peanuts. The bitterness and the kind of slight floating astringency of the baking soda melts into the toastiness and the earthy dustiness of the peanuts and they just kind of combine into a little dry puff of crumbliness in your mouth and it really lingers in an almost off mint way that kind of slight bitter sweetness Why didn't you say this earlier? We bought this bottle of Baileys for the camping trip. It was 41 fucking dollars. This is why I never buy the on-brand Baileys. It's so expensive. I only buy the off-brand Baileys. I can't taste the difference and it's like a third of the price sometimes. I don't think they messed up. I think it's just the way that the cookie is constructed. This is what they're meant to taste like. It's very unfamiliar to an American palate. It's just not sweet. Wow, Holly. Holly, were you not here? that one live where I was making trash digestives and then I mistook Aaron, not my Aaron, a fellow viewer Aaron, whose name is spelled E-R-I-N, for you Holly. For some reason I mixed the two of you up and I just, I just remember, I think Holly you're the one who keeps calling me about moving to the, the UK so that you could feed me digestives and I kept addressing Aaron and I was like, do these, have you ever made digestives before? And she was like, I'm not British <laughs> and I was like oops um, but yes I haven't baked those digestives yet we will do it sometime not sure when right. work is very busy I'm gonna start cooking a shit ton of stuff for work so not sure when I have time to cook for myself Okay, the alcoholic hit, that kind of like, that whiff of alcohol that kind of whacks you and slaps you on your tongue and evaporates over the upper palate is a little strong for me, but the sugar and the cream and the kind of fragrance of Bailey's is perfect on this. It makes it taste like a rich chocolate ganache. Um, absolutely delightful. Great recommendation. Thank you so much. Mm, alcoholic ganache. Okay. 
Hazal, is that how you say your name? Have you had these before? Is it worth trying them? Or should I just gift them to, to my community fridge? I have a lot of cookies inside me. I don't think I can take it. I'm so sorry for triggering you, Holly. I'm so I'm so sorry for triggering you with my digestive ingredients. Thank you so much for your advice, Hazal. I will gift them. They kind of look like American cookies too. I see these types of jammy cookies at grocery stores. Um, Mmm, yes, the bitter almond ones. I do believe out of the three shortbready ones, those were my favorite, for sure, for sure. Meringue tahini? Which ones are those? The ones that are in my Instagram story? I won't be eating those again tonight. I freeze them already, froze them. Yes, that makes sense. I've had those exact kind of cookies. Aaron, how did you pick these cookies? He picked ones that I thought I would like that looked interesting or weird. They're very not sweet, very surprisingly not sweet, but I've kept one of each in a Talenti container for you so you can have them tomorrow. What? Can I handle it? Yeah. I'm gonna eat them eventually. I don't love them, to be honest. I, yes, the one that we tried together was definitely by far the most enjoyable. I can make a glaze, but I won't because I like tasteless things. So in a way, you did buy the perfect ones for me. There is a bitter almond one that is my favorite. It has a very special fragrance to it. I can eat mush. Yeah, Susan, I'm not eating the ones that I posted on Instagram. I can tell you exactly what they taste like. They taste like soft, pillowy, moist in the center, Italian amaretti, but softer, without much of a crust. It was the perfect soft plush almond cookie. Um, absolutely amazing. Yes, it is like a macaron, exactly. Without a hard candied shell and with no, no like cream filling in the middle. And you can see the bits of almond skin in them, so they're made with unblanched almonds. They're a little bit more raw. And it's, it was delightful. Delightful. Yes, I'm sorry I call cookies not real food. You're totally right. Cookies are real food. I'm so sorry. How could I be my own worst bully? The times that people have told me, when are you gonna eat real food? And now I'm doing it to myself. This one was a little more expensive, so we're gonna go with this one first. Um, this one looks like it has a fancy emblem on it. It looks slightly like the DOP stamps, 
that come on a lot of European... Is Turkey a part of the EU? No. So the EU has like DOP stamps. I don't know if this is like Turkish equivalent of those stamps, but this might be coming from a very specific region, um, which means it should be pretty dang good. Oh my god. You know what this smells like. I have never smelled pistachios that smell like this. Holy schmoly. What am I smelling here? It smells like toasted ground cumin mixed with fresh spring hay that hasn't quite dried completely yet and a whiff of onion rich Indian food wafting through your window from about two and a half blocks away. That's what this smells like. A lot of umami, a light flyaway of spice, um, and a certain kind of funk earthiness to it. Mm, you can smell how sweet they will be. I feel like these pistachios will be sweet. Tiny pistachios. These are not American pistachios. They're much slimmer. They're a lot more sleeker in size and shape, and the skin is not like green as much as it is bruised purple. You can see the size. Wow. Wow. That pistachio, yes it had texture, yes it had a little bit of a crunch, but it was such a gentle, fragile construction, it kind of melted straight into butter. It tastes like fat, not bad fat, it just tastes like richness. Um, I was trying to give you a half bite. Ooh! Ooh! This one is delightfully coated in salt. Aaron, do you want a pistachio? No, thanks. It's coated in salt. Oh, your, your brush. Never mind. Color isn't showing up. But it is a very nice bright green against a papery robe of purple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Julie, I think my root canal tooth is done for. Hazal, I feel like you underestimate how much food I need. <laughs> this will last me approximately 36 hours. The skin just flies away, and then you're left with these, you know what the color is? Avocado. This looks like a mini piece of avocado chunk. I'm so sad that I can't really show you the accurate colors, but just imagine the most perfectly ripe avocado. This is that color. A slight yellow fading into a lime crema. Wow.
amazing. Everything tastes really mild today. Not in a bad way. They make me feel simpler. They make me feel capable of doing away with all the frivolities of life and just being able to sit down with tea and plain crumbly dry cookies and a handful of really rich Ooh, and the skins are starting to get a little bit astringent towards the back of my tongue and throat and it just feels like it's reminding me of the baseline of life which is a little bit bitter tiny bit sweet filled with everything that you need and you can have a little more of it if you'd like but It's just enough. And then and then you'll have the dried mulberries and you'll be like, what the fuck is this? This is so good. Um, so every once in a while, you'll get a little nice surprise. All right, last thing of the night, these red pistachios. grounds after the coffee has been brewed a little bit bitter and wasted doesn't smell rancid here with these I feel like I smelled the meat of the nuts more and with these I think I'm smelling the shells of the nuts more does that does that make sense I'm smelling like the kind of husk and hull smell. These are pink. I think they're dyed. Dyed pink. They're also a little bit fatter, I think, than the other previous ones. These taste a little more like the pistachios that I'm used to getting in the States. A little sweeter. A little drier. They're not not rich, but they're also not straight butter. Oh, that's a hard one to crack. They are not pink on the inside, no. They are a much lighter green color than the others, though. For sure. So you know how peanut butter you can taste the earthiness. These ones, you can taste the earthiness a lot more. Oh, fuck. Having a lot of trouble opening some of these, actually. This one is unlabeled, so I have no idea where they came from. I would say out of these two, they're both delicious, but the first one definitely tasted like more of an experience. This one is completely uncracked. As is this one. So it's a little bit, I think, of a lower quality batch. Although Aaron said that this was relatively expensive. Um, there is a review of peanut butter by me, yes. It lives on Delish YouTube channel. 
Wow. These, this batch of pistachios might actually make my finger bleed. And mom had a nutcracker, but I gave it away. I did never think I would need one. I've had pistachio butter in an Italian tart once in Genoa, and it was so fucking good. Oh my god, that pistachio butter. Bye, Dead Sea Life. You made it through all of the tasting anyway. That's it. Those of you who want to stick around and see me eat mush, you can. Those of you who don't, thank you for coming. Pistachio butter would not be easy to make. First of all, it will be fucking expensive as hell. Second of all, if you get hulled pistachios, they always end up tasting less fresh than the ones with shells still on, which means if you want to make the best pistachio butter, you're going to have to shell the pistachios, which is like a no bueno. That is not something I want to be doing with my life. Thank you, Erin. Whoops. It was a delight to taste and to share the smell o vision I tried everything except the raisins and the chestnuts. I did. The smaller bag is definitely better quality, in my opinion. It also, I don't know if you realize, but it has a it has what looks like a like a DOP kind of stamp on the packaging. The other one doesn't have any writing, so I don't know what the sourcing on that one is. Gotta clean up my crumbs so the roaches don't feast and grow. Didn't the exterminator used to come almost every week? Where is he when you need him? I went to visit Lala today, and um, usually when I go, she's on the eighth floor, and as I come out of the elevator, um, the cafeteria is right there, and usually her roommate, what is, what is Savizli Sukuk? Um, the last time Aaron went to Turkey, he got me this pistachio cookie that was like 99% pistachios bound together by semolina. The cookie was bright lime curd green, like the richest pistachio green I've ever seen. Fucking amazing cookies. I ate like 10 of them in one sitting. Um, those were delightful. Those were so good. But, um, oh. Yeah, I don't know how to speak Turkish, I'm sorry. But anyway, I came out of the elevator and her roommate was in the cafeteria and I always say hi to her. And we got talking about how, um, you know, like, how grandma's doing, cause Elza is her roommate. And I was like, Elza, how are you? And she was like, you know, the same. And I was like, ah, yes. And she was like, grandma's okay. And I was like, yes. Um, Ooh, walnuts dipped in molten grape juice. Sounds evil, almost. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, and she said, Grandma's okay, and she says, you know, Grandma's going strong, she's doing great, you know, she's she seems fine. And I was like, yeah, she's fine, but she's lonely. And Elza was like, yeah, but isn't, Every, everyone's lonely, but you just get used to it, you know? Like, she's used to being lonely. And I was like, 
Mm -hmm. That's really sad. I didn't say that part, but I was like thinking that that's really sad. And Elza was like, you know, once you hit 70s and 80s, you get used to being lonely. And I was like, that's why I don't want to live that long. Um, Lala's roommate is uh, English speaking. She comes from Bulgaria. And and Elza was saying how, you know, like, none of us want to live that long. I asked her, do you want to live until you're 100? She says, no. She says, you know, like, already right now I'm healthy and I already can't do things. I can't imagine being that old and not being able to do more things. Um... But she said, but you know, everyone goes to sleep at night and we all want to live to see the day. No matter how old you get, no matter what you think now, how long you want to live, you always end up wanting more. Um, <laughs> yes, time to settle. You know what? Our commune needs to be in Turkey. And then Hazal will find all the best pastries and pistachios for us. Um, and all of my teeth will fall out from non-stop root canals and me crunching down on hard things And then I'll just be gnawing on uh, Mulberries, I'll just be like sucking on the mulberries until they break down between my gums um, And that's that's life, right? We live Forever even though we think we don't want to we just get used to it We just get used to it Aaron, yes, what are the uh, burrito sauces that you have in here and can I use them? What's that? Oh, you don't know what they are. Are they spicy? been using the um, uh, Grubhub gift card that my co-workers got for me for my bereavement leave and today he got some burritos and what ta taquitos? taquitos flautas he got flautas <laughs> and they came with these sauces I'm not sure if they're spicy but I'm gonna try to put them in my mush oh hi Freddy did you hear treats Oh, what else? What else did you hear? You want treats? You want treats?
That makes sense. Fred came over because I microwaved something. Got it. That makes a lot more sense now. Thank you. I was like, why did Fred come over? But yes, that makes sense. Okay. Yes, Freddy is a big boy. You wouldn't know it, but he's big. That's, oh, oh. Oh no, Aaron, this is spicy. Okay, leave it for me. Oh no. Instant regret. spicy but it's a little more toasty the other one's just like straight chile Ready? Mush? Do you guys want me to open that box? Your answer is probably going to be yes. That is from Nature's Path. I think they gave me a goodie box for reporting very hard substances in uh, three bags of their granola that pretty much almost broke my tooth. Maybe I can sue them. <laughs> um, maybe we got more coupons for free cereal. We ran out of free cereal because I eat a whole box a day. Oh my god, Vanetta, you're hilarious. I also need a sponsorship from Heinz, please. Eighteen recipes using ketchup. Stringy bits. I used to hate the sound of whetstones. It really grates on my ears a little bit. Nature's Path and Hearst because uh, the rocks were from Nature's Path but the award cutting my finger was from Hearst. <laughs> Chips. Really? Que pasa? Um, 
This is volcanic stone ground corn. I don't know what the fuck that means. I guess they made stones out of volcanic rocks to grind the corn down. I don't know why they felt compelled. Oh, Mexican volcanic stones grind our corn. Unlike most other corn chips, which use highly processed corn flour, que pasa tortilla chips are crafted from whole kernel corn, the traditional way they've been made in Mexico for generations. These are probably gonna be my favorite thing from this package, and these are the only thing that's not nature's path. And finally, we have a hoodie. Wow. A Nature's Path hoodie. Um, I will definitely be giving this one away because I have way too much clothes, as you know. Mo Mocajete? Eat organic, heal the planet. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna donate this shit away. Sorry, that is just, as if we can heal the planet by eating organic, please. This is for anyone who's local and wants it, organic royal apparel. It is a size medium and it is a 100% organic cotton. Holler at me if you're in the area and you want a Nature's Path organic hoodie. It is like a washed, blue gray it's like um that really kind of romantic color of iris you know people who have blue eyes and you can sink into them and they look like they have both the deepest all-knowing soul and absolutely no soul at all that's what this color Aaron, do you want a hoodie? I don't think Aaron wants a hoodie. No. Dang, guys, no coupons. It truly would have been cheaper for them to just send me coupons rather than ship five pounds of cereal. And what I would have infinitely preferred. Um, Aaron, feel free to take a look at these cereals and whatever you don't want, I'll put in a community fridge. All right. Now I will just eat mush. This is true. Fred is going to love this box, I think. The que pasa is good. I'm not gonna scoop mush with the que pasa. I love eating tortilla chips on their own. I don't even like eating them with salsa. Sometimes guac is okay, but for me, I love just the pure, unadulterated taste of corn mush in my mouth. Bye, Michelle Diane. I find it fascinating that they decided to give me two kids cereals. Maybe they, these are their best sellers. I don't know. By the way, I believe if you follow our delish video editor Zach on Instagram, he just posted that um, workers are on strike at, who owns Kashi? Does anybody know who owns Kashi? I think they're Kellogg's. Yes, they're owned by Kellogg's. Um, we, we are currently encouraging everybody to boycott Kellogg's. Their workers are on strike. So Kellogg's unfortunately owns a lot of brands. But if you can, hold off on buying Kellogg's. Maybe do so that you can support the workers. Um, this is the first article that Google pulled up 
when I googled Kellogg's strike. Rolling Stone, serial killers, how 80 hour works, how 80 hour weeks and a case, a cast, cast system, a cast system pushed Kellogg's workers to strike. After decades on the losing end, company workers are demanding a better deal. The serial giants has other plans. Of course they do. Of course they have other plans. Yeah, Kashi is under Kellogg's. Today I learned. I'm very, very sad. I think they got bought out in the last 10 years. Field is owned by Dannon? Well, fuck me. I did not know that. Jesus Christ, I thought they were fucking independent. I am so dumb. Of course they are huge. Wow. Well, uh, let me know what yogurt companies to support now, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, I've been buying a lot of Stony Field, but maybe I should stop. What is the, uh, straight straight Kellogg's claims its employees only work 52 to 56 hours a week. Kellogg's claims they only work 52 to 56 hours a week. Only. And 90% of overtime is voluntary. That's what Kellogg's claims. Um, a, a mechanic at the plant says the worst is when you work a 7 to 7, that's 12 hours, and they tell you to come back at 3 a.m. on a short turnaround. You work 20, 30 days in a row and you don't know where work and your life ends and begins. Sound familiar? That's illegal, by the way. You can't work seven days in a row. So to work 20 to 30 days in a row, I don't, I don't think you're legally allowed to do that. Let me look. Labor laws. Seven days. Okay, so maybe it's a New York one. New York overtime law. New York labor laws require certain employers to provide their employees with at least 24 hours of consecutive rest time in any calendar week. This means that if the employee has already worked six out of seven days, they must have a day off on the seventh day. So I've always lived in New York. That was the rule that I go by. Um, it is section 161 of the labor law. long. I don't doubt that some people would volunteer for overtime because overtime you get paid time and a half. You get paid 150% of your usual rate. So people who are getting paid shit anyway and need the extra money to support their families would voluntarily sign up for overtime because they've basically paid the unit price of their labor and so if they work even more they can get paid 50% more. However, can you imagine if you worked 80 hours a week for consecutive weeks? Like, there's only seven days in a week. 80 hours in a week would entail that you're working, what's the math, like 11 point something hours a day? 
Um, that's like me and Budget Eats. <laughs> labor laws. They exist for a reason. That burrito spice is really spicy. <clears throat> Ithaca milk. Noted. However, I don't have Fairway in Queens, I don't think. Fairway is like a fairly bougier market that I see mostly in Manhattan. Very sad. Very sad. Anyway, boycott Kellogg's, please, if you want to support the union. I mean, they're probably exempt from laws because they have enough money and influence to, like, hire the best people to find loopholes because laws aren't perfect. There will always be loopholes. And also... The thing about these laws is that you can choose to violate laws and just pay the fine for them because most of the time the fine does not outweigh their gain and profit by violating these laws. So obviously after a cost benefit analysis, it works out for them business wise to break the laws, pay for damages later, which isn't guaranteed. They don't always pay for damages later, not if they don't get sued. So for them, it's still a win. Laws shouldn't work like that. Our justice, should, our justice system shouldn't work like it does now either, but it does. When justice is unjust, Oh, Freddie. Freddie has ruined uh, mom's chair by plucking his little nails into them. So soon this chair will be torn up. But I'm sure mom would have been fine with it. Anything for her grandson. Did I tell you mom offered me to buy Fred a bigger cat house? like a bigger cat tree house because she saw him and she was like, he looks too big for that house now. So it can be on me. It can be a gift from me to him. Can you buy him a bigger house? Yes, I buy Chobani. Chobani just doesn't make um, unstrained yogurt. Chobani is mostly Greek yogurt. But yes, when I buy yogurt, I often buy Chobani. Sometimes I buy Faye if it's on sale. But I actually like the slightly smoother, looser consistency of Chobani over Faye. Faye is a little too thick sometimes. Fred would look so handsome in a bow tie. I can imagine that. Okay. Wow. Ashley Composition, are you on a vegan diet? Because I cannot stand coconut yogurt. They are disgusting to me. And also Skier 
Skira, I believe, is traditionally made with lower fat um, dairy, and I also don't like skier. I feel like it tastes a little bit too low fat for me, and also it triggers my lactose intolerance a lot more. My digestive parts work a lot better when I eat full fat dairy. As a lactose intolerant, whenever I go skim on something, that is when the torture begins. Wee is really tasty, but I do believe that it, that's a Dannon one, right? It's Yoplait. Who owns Yoplait? Oh, Yoplait is owned by General Mills and So Deal. I don't know who So Deal is, but it's a French company. The only vegan yogurt that I like is silk soy yogurt. That is the only vegan yogurt that I found enjoyable. Somebody said Stonyfield isn't owned by Dannon. Did you fact check yourself, Aaron? What? I didn't say that. Somebody in your chat said Oh, sorry. I, I assumed it was right, so I was like, that must be why they're everywhere. They hold your chat to account, too. Okay, it is, it is owned by Danon. <laughs> spelled slightly differently and then it was owned by Lactalis which is also French um, in 2017 it changed ownership into Lactalis it also owns Parmalat, Président, Siggies this word that I cannot pronounce it's a Swedish word Skaname oh my god I'm not even gonna try uh, Rachel's Organic and Stonyfield. They have a revenue of almost 20 billion as of 2019. What is superannuation? Steph, I've never heard of that term before. Educate me, please. Whatever annuation is, I don't think we get it. <laughs> Ashley Composition says, honestly, I cannot be a human, law-abiding citizen, student, worker, minority, poor, mentally unstable, and an activist. I feel so guilty when I don't. Yes. 100% I feel that. Especially when we were all stuck at home at the beginning of the pandemic and everybody was using their social media to like speak up for Black Lives Matter and to put other people's um, narratives forward uh, by amplifying their voices. I believe that was a term that we used. It, there was just such a pressure to be one of the good ones. And it's it felt so much like being on a social justice hamster wheel that I felt immediately guilty whenever I didn't repost something. And at that point, I was like, this is not working for me. Because one, it is basically like an echo chamber. Like, who am I addressing anyway? And most of the people who follow me will feel similarly. So like, what is this doing anyway for anyone? Um, and secondly, it's just like, it's not doing anything for anyone because I'm just posting on social media.
So I, you know, like, just do whatever you need to do to survive and try to be closer to happiness when you can. And if that means taking a break from being a, a social justice warrior and an activist, then take a fucking break. Um, here's what I've realized. There is no saving the world. There is only saving yourself. And we are all on fire now. We have been burning for quite a while. Some of us have burnt out and have kept going. I feel like that fucking blown flat tire that's just keep just keeps pounding and rolling on all of the highways and pavements because whoever's driving me hasn't realized that that tire's blown out and it's just like the rubber is starting to fall off the rim and it's just gonna start grinding and sparks are gonna keep flying and then eventually this car's gonna catch on fire. It's just gonna fall off and this car will really just start to self-destruct. So, I don't know where this metaphor is going, but stop the fucking car, find a spare wheel, change out the wheel, and just take a break from driving. By the way, welfare is there so that we can all partake in it. The stigma is such that we have this idea of welfare queens that like we bring to ourselves the sense of shame for being recipients of welfare. But welfare is there for you if you need it. There's a reason why there's qualifications for being on welfare programs. Um, if you qualify, you qualify. Take advantage of it. You've already paid the fucking taxes into it. Whether or not we want to admit it, certain parts of our government is, thank God, socialist in practice. So just use it. You've already paid into it. You're already being charged for the service. Why would you not take the free butter off the table if you want to eat butter right now? It's included in your tab. Just use it. I did... Um, Back when I was in high school, the SNAP, uh, which is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, I think, it used to be known as the Food Stamp Program. When I was researching the Food Stamp Program in high school, I found out that if a state does not distribute all of the budget it's been given for food stamps, aka people aren't applying because of stigma, people aren't applying because of red tape, people aren't applying because they don't know or they're scared because they're not documented. For whatever reason, if people don't apply and get these benefits and use these benefits, everyone loses out because that's funding that's already being given from the federal to the state level. And if you claim those benefits and you use it, you are putting that into the economy and you are, you are just basically churning spending and that helps everyone. Um, when nobody spends, our money system, our, our imaginary, weirdly operating, uh, who knows the rules, um, doesn't work as well. So you got to put oil into it. Um, otherwise, you know, door's going to squeak, handles aren't going to turn, and uh, it's going to be like mom's gas stove where it's all rusted over and you need a fucking light to turn on the gas. Um... So yes, case in point, if you qualify for those programs, apply for the fucking thing and use it. No shame. And that's the thing too, like disability, some of them are very invisible. We can't be putting people into categories because we don't know them. So again, qualifications for these programs exist. They're not perfect, but if you do qualify, there is no reason why you shouldn't partake in them. It is better for us to fucking spend our budget on food stamps and nutrition supplements no matter what the people who get these supplements choose to buy with that money, than it is for us to spend billions, 
billions and trillions on weapons and bombing people. Like, food not bombs, right? to help me hold me to this if I go live tomorrow you have to remind me to bleach the fridge doors because I feel like there's a slight layer of mold growing on the rubberized edges and it's getting really freaky it's it's kind of starting to look, to look like the grout on my bathtub which we bleached last weekend to great effect so tomorrow we bleach um but this pear is very ripe so we're gonna eat it and then I guess I'll sign off and try to go to sleep like a normal human being again back to work y'all what a routine bye Holly thank you for joining sorry for triggering you with the with, with the digestives um, will the bleach hurt the rubber probably but I also don't want mold on my fridge because that's just gonna spread to all my food right Yes, we know some of us are very bleach obsessed. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. I've tried vinegar before, it does not work. Bye, Doc. Mmm. This is very pretty. This pear tastes very pretty. This pear tastes like all the roses you've been gifted on Valentine's Day, plus all of the Easter flowers in church, plus the rose garden that comes alive in June in Portland, Oregon, plus in-season cherries squished fresh underfoot in the orchard. Rental apartments come furnished. What fridges? Bye, Allison. All right, you know what? Let's try it with some soap now. Why not? You're making me feel very guilty for trying to use bleach on it. spare toothbrushes that were used at mom's because I just wanted to get rid of stuff but they would have been so helpful for cleaning it is helping 
thing, but it's certainly not going to do what bleach would do. But I guess trade-offs for everything, huh? I do feel much better though. Okay. Oh, we did something. Didn't fix it all, but sometimes you can't get all of it in one go. <gasps> it's December. Happy December.
Anyway, I thought it was, um, ooh, happy birthday. Um, I thought it was really funny when I was telling everyone that I was going back to work and it sounded like some people in the comments were thinking that I wouldn't go live anymore, but these lives are really essential to me because um, they're another structure in my life that would prevent me from overworking myself. Um, working hours that I do not get paid for. So it is nice to have things in your life other than work. So thank you all for being here. My hobby, yes. Is it a sad hobby? <laughs> And you all help me do things like clean out my disgusting molding fridge thing. Lining? What do you call? Gasket? Gasket. And some of you give me great advice. Some of you don't, but some of you give me great advice. I was thinking today how interesting it is that I've started to cling to what's essentially trash because I associate it with my mom, like this bottle of palm olive soap detergent that I've watered down a little bit because it was we were down to the last tablespoon. Aaron had filled this into this is our first dish soap, and then Aaron filled the rest of this bottle in here so that we could get rid of this bottle. And then I saw this bottle in the recycling bin, and I was like, wait, there's still, like, soap in it. And uh, normally I would do this anyway just to use up every little last bit of soap, but for this particular bottle, it was really hard for me to just let that go because, I joke you not, this bottle of dish detergent has been on mom's sink for at least three years. She had this bottle for like a year before the pandemic. She rarely used it. She used baking soda for a lot of her cleaning um, because she feels like this was more chemically and therefore less healthy. Um, and so I was just like, mom saved this and didn't use it for so long, like, I have to use every single last drop of this. But it's just trash. I'm just holding on to it because it seems like it was mom's stuff, and I'm having a hard time letting go of mom's stuff. And, um, like, even the coat, the last coat that she gifted me, that she brought over to my apartment right when the pandemic made everyone shut down and stay at home. It came with a tag on, it was like a Marshalls tag and Aaron just saw it on my desk today and he was like, you're gonna, you're gonna keep this random Marshalls tag? And I was like, yeah, it came off of the jacket that mom bought me, like the very last jacket that mom gifted me. Um, and I was like, don't worry, I'll let it go one day, but I'm just not ready right now, you know? That's kind of just, just holding on to trash because I don't have my mom anymore.
I was talking to grandma today, um, and I was updating her on the sale of the house, and she asked me how much we're listing it for, and I told her, and she was like, that's low. You're gonna lose so much money on it. It's like, so low. And I was like, you know what, grandma? Like, mom's dead. Like, that's the ultimate loss. Um, so what do we care if we're losing out on money? We've already lost mom. That's kind of just been, like, my state of mind with everything. Is I shouldn't care so much about things. Because the most important thing is gone. This sticker, not sticker, this tag... My wet hand just hit it, and it started to disintegrating this bottom corner. I almost feel like it's a sign from mom. Of course, I'm going to attribute meaning to meaningless occurrences, like me with wet hands, obviously logically rubbing it off by accident. But I would just say, like, maybe that's mom telling me that it's fine to throw this away. And you know what, mom? You're right. Thanks, Mom. There. It just took me a week. I do still have the jacket, and you know what? That furry hood lining is so soft. It's delightfully soft. And I think that coat is not really mom's style. And I was thinking about this. I think the last coat she ever gifted me, she bought to fit my aesthetic because it's really baggy. It almost looks like it's already old, even though it's brand new. I always had like a slight bohemian or sometimes just straight hobo look. And she always thought that I looked really frumpy with my choices in clothing. But I feel like with this one, it was like a good marriage of what she deemed wearable and what I wanted. It comes with a lot of really fat pockets too, like really deep pockets where my phone won't fall out if I run with it in the pocket. Um, so thanks mom. to show off the coat again. It's like almost as soft as Fred. Bait pockets big ass pockets and then we have these flaps that are not pockets but these are pockets they're very weird pockets with a button like a chest pocket with a button not the most secure but you have them that's it just two really big pockets oh and the funny thing about these pockets is um, there's a pocket here, and then you open this up, and there's another layer of the pocket here. So it's like a double layered pocket with a piece of fabric in between.
with all the coats that I've inherited from mom, I think I'm gonna try and see if I can live out the rest of my life not buying another coat. I think we can do it, honestly. I think we can do it. It'll be a fun project. There are pockets in the pockets. No joke, I fit my Sony over the head noise canceling headphones into one of those pockets. They are big. Thanks guys. Um, I managed to donate my big furry squirrel coat and mom's brown corduroy jacket. Um, there's a there's a Sunnyside based group. I believe their Instagram is called Resistance is Fertile. Um, and they do a lot of composting events. And this Saturday they had a coat drive in uh, as a part of like a community event but i missed it so i dm'd them on instagram and i was like i'm so sorry i missed this are you still taking coats and she was like yeah i'm actually walking from sunnyside to this church in woodside and she met up with me uh halfway and she took the coats from me so hopefully they went to a nice place but let me show you fred oh he's very asleep Are you dreaming, Freddy? Did you see those twitchies? He's dreaming. Are you having a good dream or a bad dream, Freddy? I won't disturb him just in case he's having a great dream. Thank you for eating all the snacks with me. I really, really enjoyed hanging out. And um, I have a whole to-do list for lives. <laughs> so uh, we're going to potentially bleach fridge door sometime this week. We're going to taste this Gemai Cha that I got from L.A. Um, I don't actually know what this is because it doesn't have tea leaves in it, it just has rice. So I'm very much looking forward to it. It's just roasted rice. Um, we might bake the digestives on the weekend, I'm thinking. We might fry off some of those soy crisps that I got, the Indonesian ones, I believe. Um, oh, I have to cut up a sweater, okay. I also got free Tupperware samples that I wanted to review. And um, we're going to take off these Christmas lights. And maybe also make popcorn. Don't know yet. By the way, I think the next Budget Eats will involve using mom's pantry items that I still have left. Okay, bye.